and everyone, today's episode of like nutrition secrets is uh, how do we how do you get your front teeth to sell without selling? Okay, and so this is a this is actually a bit of like an oxymoron, right? <laughs> <laughs> we want to sell, but we don't want to be salesy, right? And just so for all the people that are new uh, that's joined um, this episode is uh, just want I'm the host of this show. My name is Rick Lau. And I'm on this journey and this journey is like, how do we get more new patients during this like crisis and still be, be profitable? So we talk about everything, not only search engines, we talk about like um, social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Google, my business listings, or even like doctor marketing. And today, um, you know, we got the special guest, you know, which is like D right. And, and I want to talk about like, yeah, you know, like we're getting all this traffic uh, coming to our website. We're getting all this traffic, Rainer um, calling um, our clinic, right? What are we like? What are we doing to be able to like convert that phone call right into yeah. um, uh, into a patient? You know, and and so uh, maybe we can start off like so. D, uh, why don't you tell us maybe about like quickly your journey? You know, like how did you get yeah. into like um, um, you know training like front desk people to sell? You know, yeah. in, in in a clinical setting, which is yeah. kind of taboo, right? In, in the healthcare world that we're in, right? Yeah, it is. It totally is. And, you know, I mean, I, um, I am a physical therapist, so I have that background. So I really have that understanding of patients. But at the same time, having worked in the medical field and with other medical professionals, um, when my husband started needing help to expand his practice, he was like, hey, come help. And uh, I learned, I was in a financial course and they were talking about fixing your, fixing all your leaks. And so I was like, okay. And I started taking notes and thinking of, okay, where am I how, leaking? And I'm like, front desk, front desk, front desk, front desk. And I was like, no training, no drilling, no support, no scripts. And so I just really took over working at our front desk and took my skills, my clinical skills and started figuring out scripting and other things that would really help handle my patients, right? I never had a problem getting my patients to show up for therapy when I was managing them. But when I required somebody else to do that management side of things so that I could treat. That's when things started to fall out. And so I, I started with my cancellations, cancellation rate in our clinic because it was 75%. And we started nailing down the scripting for that and we got it up to 95%. And I was just on a call with my CEO before this call and it's now 96, 97% arrivals every day. So that's that was a big thing for us. And then that's I started- awesome, by the way. That's awesome, yeah. like a 96% awesome. arrival rate. Yeah. Yep. Type in the chat everyone, what is your arrival weight? Um, um, type that in the chat, what your percentage is. And if you don't know, put um, uh, put question mark, you know, right? And if yeah. you're not, this is stuff that you're measuring, you know? So D, keep on going. 92, 93 is not bad. 80%, we could totally work on that. It's all right. Um, you know, like I said, we started at 75%. And so, you know, my goal, that means 25% of my patients weren't getting the care they needed. Other patients weren't getting in. Um, so we focused on that. And then I, um, we started doing a lot of Facebook internet marketing where there, we weren't just marketing to our past patients anymore. And oh gosh, we had, um, we just, it was a real struggle for my front desk to be able to convert those calls because they're cold leads, right? And so we started working on really specific processes and scripting to master that. And so we have a, about a 92 to 96% conversion rate. Um, off of all avenues that we market to. And uh, in Virginia, we don't market much to doctors because they all have their own clinics. So um, yeah. it's a big part of what I do. So, yeah. That's, that's great. That's a great introduction. Everyone, let's um, uh, maybe type in the chat. What is one thing um, that you want to learn from like um, D today? Okay, type that, that in the chat. Um, Cause I'm really curious, like, you know, like once again, like we have like for the next 43 minutes, what is one thing you want to learn from D type in the chat and hopefully we're going to get to it right, you know? And so, um, and D as people take things in the chat, I want to take this off. Um, you know, what would you say is like maybe um, your uh, top, uh, top three, maybe top like secret on how to actually get your front desk to sell without being salesy. Okay. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so, if you could share something like, you know, something tactical that maybe people in the community could actually learn to be able to implement like in the, in, in, uh, in the week to come, you know? So. Yeah. So first of all, the very first thing you have to do is teach your front desk how to identify all those potential patients, because in most cases, we're actually losing patients before we ever actually have a chance to convert them. And it's usually those, those shopper calls. So, you know, patient calls and they say, do you take my insurance? Do you treat my condition? Do you what's your private pay rate? What's your, 
um, what are your hours, right? And so if the first thing you want your front office to do is be able to- Well, actually, hey, actually, Dee, sorry, I don't want to cut you off. One thing, everyone, as you type in the chat, can you change it to uh, your drop down menu to uh, a panelist and attendee so everyone can see what's going on? Because there's a lot of stuff that's happening, but no one can see it, right? So maybe type that, uh, maybe retype uh, what the one thing you want to learn from D in the chat. It's uh, you got on your drop down menu, you have to put panelists and attendees. Please do that. And then D, sorry to cut you off. I just want everyone to okay. see like all the good stuff happening here. Yeah, so first of all, you have to teach your, your staff needs to understand and be able to really track and follow um, everybody that's a potential patient, right? Because our staff tend to feel most comfortable with that person that calls you and says, hi, I need physical therapy, or hi, I need veterinary services, or hi, I need um, chiropractic services. And what happens is they miss those people that are calling that low hanging fruit. So my first piece of advice is, number one, they have to be able to identify all of those potential leads and recognize that all of them can be converted on that initial call, right? So that's first. The next thing I would suggest with that is um, they have, with that, they have to recognize that, look, people don't get better or don't recover. Our pets don't recover. Um, we don't get the care we need if we don't show up. So they have to understand the purpose of any phone call is, um, not to necessarily jump to answer questions, but to actually remain in control of that phone call so they convert that patient. And you can convert in network, out of network, cold leads, past patients, referrals, very simply by managing the patient properly. And that's a big part of what I do when I train front desk staff is um, teach them how to convert people, how to manage them more properly so that they're not being nice, right? It's, we can conv confuse being nice, Rick, with um, being in control. Like I can't, I can't tell you what to do, which I can't, but I need to be able to control where you go so that you're not struggling. You don't make the so, wrong so, decision. So D, like I've listened to, like, you know, I call here, this is what we do. We analyze phone conversations. You know, we've analyzed over a hundred thousand, like last month, over a hundred thousand patient conversations, right? And what I could tell you is that like most people when they call a clinic right it seems like they're taking a, like like it when it, when a patient or a lead calls a clinic it seems like it's a transaction you know yeah. you know it, it seems like they are like buying like you know broccoli at a grocery store yeah it's taking yeah. that order so be, maybe you could talk about like how like you know maybe like the first thing that should happen is like you know why that first phone call should like feel like a conversation you would have with your grandma versus yeah. making a transactional like you know yeah. like hey do you want to buy some gas or like you want to buy some diesel you know what i mean <laughs> you know yeah. like, this is a cost this is the price yeah. take or leave it right right so somebody you know somebody asked in one of the questions earlier they said um you know how do you how do you get you know like when you're getting patients well first of all you have to promote a service that you provide you have to promote to the problem that somebody has and get them to reach out. And then your front office team needs, that first phone call can't sound like this. So I demo this for, for Rick before you, I don't care what practice you are or what specialty you have, your first phone call can't sound like click, good afternoon, Dr. So-and-so's office. And then the patient says, or the person says, yeah, I need to uh, get in, or what are your services? Or can you help me? It can, and then you hear the doctors or the medical office say, are you a current patient? Okay, and uh, what's your insurance? And uh, okay, I can get you in on this date, right? That sounds transactional. And when, what that sounds like, what does that sound like to you, Rick? Like if somebody's handling you that way on the phone, is there, is, what's, what's missing from that conversation? How about empathy? Yeah, well, <laughs> empathy. empathy. And, yeah. and you know what I think, like, you know, like, um, actually type in the chat. Um, I wanna know like how many people in here, like their role, are, they, are you an owner? Or are you like a manager? Or are you a front desk? But type that in the chat, everyone. You know, yeah, what so are you? Are you right. owner, Everybody. manager, front desk? You know, right? You know. Yeah, and so if you think about it, for those of you that are owners and managers, right? Physios, this is real for you too. Um, yeah, so we're probably like 50-50 owners, managers. Oh, there's some front yeah. desk on here. Good. So when we're so, so, so yeah, I'm going to ask you a question because you know. So back to your original question. Yeah. Is that you know, um, is, uh, is, uh, like, I think for, for, oh man, I forgot. What was the question? Well, you were asking,
asking me, you were talking to me about, well, you were talking about the grandmother relationship. So I demoed for you the phone call that we naturally have when we call our doctor's office or veterinary office or, you know, any kind of provider's office or anything in a service industry, right? So what the real, the, there's three things that have to happen on this first call. And so training our front desk staff to be able to handle and create these three things is very valuable. So first of all, we have to get the person communicating with us, right? Communication is key. It's not, we have to, and it has to be two way communication. So when I'm, if Rick's calling me and I answer the phone, right? I have to have, I have to make Rick feel welcome. So first of all, there has to be a greeting that's not like, hello, and it can't say Dr. So-and-so's office. It has to be like, you know, good afternoon, anywhere physical therapy, this is Dee, how may I help you, right? So there's, there's a components to a greeting so that when I say, how may I help you, Rick's like, oh, I'm welcome yeah. to talk to Dee. Now I feel like, okay, there's something here, right? We've got to do that. And then we start to really converse with that patient. It's not about immediately offering that patient getting scheduled for your out of network services, for high deductible services, for um, um, private pay, uh, all of those. Um, somebody else had another one. I can't, oh, cold traffic, right? So if when we're dealing with those types of patients and we're not dealing with those people that have come to us for a hundred years, they require a little more finesse, but we need a way to make it easy for our staff. Our, our front office staff need an easy way to manage these patients. So we teach so, them how to be so in the, control. Yeah, that's awesome, Dee. And I just, I just, one thing I just want to add is that like, you know, the experience that you actually want on that first phone call is the same experience you want um, when that patient sees the clinician for the first yeah. time, like when you do that initial assessment and yeah. you do that initial consult, whether you're a physio, car, massage, that's the type of relationship that you want to replicate yes. that uh, with your front desk. If, if, if that makes sense, type in uh, uh, assessment uh, in the chat, you know, right? Uh, type in yeah. assessment in the chat. And, and that's all we're talking about is that like that type of like patient report that you want, it needs to be like, copy and paste it with the front desk like d what are your thoughts about that yeah so it's not just about the communication the next thing is the more i get you communicating to me about yourself and what's going on and etc now you start to trust me and remember for those of you that are medical providers for those of you that are veterinarians other service industry i as a patient you know nothing about me when i call absolutely nothing about me when i call you and if you don't start to learn something about me you can't you don't know that I've been somewhere else and had a bad experience or had an uneventful, unexciting experience, or maybe I don't trust this service, but I'm giving you a chance because your ad was so amazing. So the next thing you have to do besides communication is trust. I have to get that person on that phone call to trust me. That's how you sell without being salesy, right? Now- so What do you say? What do you say? What do you, what do you say? To, like, you know, like, this is great. You know, like you're, you're giving us like good, you know, I think we get this. So yeah. what are some tactical, what are a couple of like things you, we could ask, like, like, like a, a lead, you know, right. Or like a potential new patient, right? Um, yeah. So, so, you know, there's a process, there's a series of questions that you ask that, that do that, but you're, you're finding out more about this patient, about their experience, where they're at, what they're, what, you know, what has served them, what has not served them. Um, you're not evaluating them as a PT or a physio or a chiropractor, but you are working to find out more because remember, think about being in an elevator with somebody. You're standing there next yeah. to somebody in an elevator, super uncomfortable. But if one of you starts a question and starts a conversation with that person, now the other person's invited to communicate back. And the, what's the number one thing that people are the most willing to talk about that warms up the conversation? Themselves. Right. Yeah. So you get that patient talking about okay. themselves. Let's get into that. What is the, give, give us one question. Give a couple of questions that like someone asked. And, and, and maybe I can start off sharing, you know. So we do this a lot with like, um, I see this a lot within our community. The one question I actually like to have, have when people like talk about, like, for example, they're coming for back, they say like, oh, my back's broken or whatever, you know, or I need help with the one question I would first ask them is like, what happened, you know? I just want to find out what happened. Tell me more. And they get into the life story about kind of like exactly what happened. And then I, yeah. and I, and I like to offer some like sympathy saying, Oh, I'm so sorry that I'm so sorry. You're in this pain, right? I'm so sorry. You're going through this right now. You know? So yeah. D like, you know, that, that's something we, we, that I've seen very effective in you know, creating report 
Uh, initially, in the initial conversation, what, what, are, what, are your, what are your thoughts about that? And what have you seen that works quite well with the people you work with? Well, yeah, I mean, first of all, you have to be in control. You, if you ask, and first of all, just one piece of advice, if you ask an open-ended question to a person, and, and for all my PCCs in front of desk on this call right now, they're going to be like, oh my God, yes, right? If I say to you, Rick, what's, what made you pick up the phone and call me today? You could go back to 1970 and start telling me your whole life story. And that is not an efficient or an effective way to manage your patients. So it has to be very efficient. It has to be the patient care coordinator has to be the one that's in control of this process if we want to sell without being salesy. So first of all, you, it can't be just... So tell me about your condition because it turns into this big, long, painful conversation. And the patient care coordinator's got four people walking in the door, three people checking out, and now it just becomes this stressed out thing. So, so it's really important to find out, you know, you have to find out what they're suffering with. I love the word suffering, right? Because if you're suffering, what are you more likely to do, Rick? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You're, maybe pe people type in the chat. You know, what is what is one question that um, um, you find to uh, what's one question um, that we've used to like get people to like talk more? I think Judith uh, in here put like, how long have you suffered this for? Like, uh, what does this concern keep you from doing? You know, where else have you been treated? Like, what's what's your opening question? So go ahead, Dee. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's really about finding out what they've been suffering with. What's that one thing they've been suffering with? that made them pick up the phone and call. Because think about it, you, this tells you about your marketing as well, right? So for those of you that are spending a lot of money on social media marketing, if you have to be targeting the problem that a person has to get them to pick up the phone and call you, well, now you have to, you have to find out what that is, right? And then as you're, as you're doing that, now you're handling, now you're gathering more data. Are they in pain? Think about it, if somebody's in pain, doesn't that make it yeah. more urgent for them to want to come in? So you're- I love what Robin wrote. I love, I love what Robin wrote here. Like what problem is this keeping you from doing? You know, I want to find out what is this industry stopping you from, uh, what is this injury stopping you from doing? You know, is it because like you want to, you know, like you're having problems like taking a bath with your kid. Is it because you can't play with, um, you know, uh, you can't play with your grandchild at the park, you know, right? You know, right. and so- yeah, and so it's really about doing those things. And as you start to ask more questions, as you start to really show that you care and you're concerned on this phone call, now the person starts to, yeah, you're building rapport, like Crystal said, right? It's really about gathering data to build a relationship. It's not about evaluating the patient. It's not about your physical therapist. It's truly about gathering data so that you're building a relationship. That person feels like there's a relationship with you. If you think about the first call that I demonstrated, there is no relationship there. So if you're dealing with out of network patients and you wanna be able to handle their objections and you don't have data that you can use to handle their objections, you can't handle their objections, right? So everything you do, everything you, your patient care coordinators do starts on the first phone call. They have to greet everybody very welcomingly because you don't know before you answer the phone if it's a new patient on there right and so it's really Indeed. about leading them it is something that i've seen uh, very effective you know I've, I've done a lot of sales training you know um, um in general is like uh, using someone's first name a lot right you know like repeating it like numerous times in the conversation because that uh using the first name like is like music like everyone loves like their, their name you know um, and I've, I've, I, you know, th there's a girl that I that I interviewed a couple of like uh, sessions ago with uh, her name's the phone lady. <laughs> All she does is like phone sales training, and that was the one time she was like, you know, the first thing you want to do when you start the phone call is find out their name and yes. use their name like repeatedly in the phone call because that will uh, um, help build rapport. If that makes sense, type in um, first name in the chat. You know, like this is one thing you could do. Um, you know, uh, uh, tactically uh, in, in terms of like scripting and training. And it's just a natural way of doing it. Type in first name in the chat that makes sense. Dee, I want to hear from what, what your thoughts about this is. Yeah, I mean, I think first name is really important, but I also think it's about control, right? A big part of, you know, look, our front office staff get on the job training, right? And so Sally trains Sue and Sue trains Bill and things can get missed. It's like playing a game of telephone. So um, a lot of times our front office team come with us and they're like, okay, so, so how do we, you know, like, how do we actually handle that patient so that we can control them? 
and, and control is not a bad thing. Control is about helping that lead that patient. Like you and I were talking about the first time we met Rick, leading them on a path, right? And the very first step to getting recovered or to handling their problem, whatever service you're in, is about getting that person to actually schedule a, an eval or schedule a new patient, new client appointment. And so we can't just be like, oh, what would you like? How would you like it? What works for you? It has to be very, very directed. This is this is interesting, D, because I don't know. I hear conflicting like messages on this. And like my thoughts is that if 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 a new patient is worth a couple thousand dollars, right? And it takes me an extra two, three minutes or five minutes to close that deal, I 100 percent will spend that time, you know? It is. And so and I, once again, like, you know, these sessions is like we, you know, I love like these sessions where we kind of debate. So I actually like like these kind of open-ended questions where I could actually dive a little deeper, but at the same point, you bring up a good control is like, you do want to control it to a point where like, they don't just ramble on for like the next 20 minutes. Right. So what is that kind of fine line between like, you know, getting them to open up, but also keep it control. What are some like, like tactical things that you could share with the community on how they could keep a conversation in control, yeah. you know? Well, I mean, first of all, you, you have to be in control of the process. You can't let the patient run that phone call. And, you know, there's a, there is a fine line between gathering the right data because you want to put yourself in a position of authority. I don't want a patient to see me as a receptionist. I don't want my clients' patients to see their front desk staff as a, as a, um, as a receptionist, they're not a receptionist. Their job is to coordinate the patient's care from the very first phone call through full recovery, right? So that your PTs or your chiros or your other clinicians are solely focused on providing the care. And so, you know, somebody commented in this here, Crystal commented, you know, front desk doesn't have three to five minutes to do an ink take. I will tell you, and I know that there are clients of mine on this call today because they told me that they were going to be here. They will tell you with 100% accuracy, it is highly valuable to everyone that you are that you take that three to five minutes and you actually develop that relationship on that first call, or you are losing visits. And if you're losing visits, you're losing money. And you know we stressed about cancellations, but your new patient. Think about your the value of every new patient. If, if Rick had was going to pay me or had a, a insurance that paid me $100 a visit, right? And um, I'm working with him and he would be a plan of care, let's say 12 visits, that's $1,200 to my practice. But if I can't handle Rick on that first phone call and get him to recognize as an out-of-network patient or as somebody off of Facebook that has no relationship to me whatsoever, if I can't get him to realize he has a problem, he's not going to, to book with me. And then I'm kind of SOL and that's $1,200 the practice loses. So when you look at three to five extra minutes or you look, and here's the thing to consider, most practices that I work with, especially on the physio side and the chiro side, y'all are highly understaffed in your front office. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so when you tell me, and I totally get this, uh, uh, Crystal, I, um, I look at, I look at staffing and it's really about a hundred visits to every patient care coordinator um, when they're doing any sort of insurance verifications, billing, Ooh. et cetera. So that's um, your metrics. So, so if you get, a, is a hundred patients a week, a hundred patients a day? hundred a week. hundred a week. Um, so, it? Yeah. Because think about okay. it. Okay. So, well, okay. If they're doing verifications, that takes yeah. time away from your front desk. And here's the other thing you really should. Okay. No, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Just stop here. Just, uh, just, just so we, so your bench, because once again, uh, when I hire about staffing, like, you yeah. know, because, you know, we run a lot yeah. of, we run four or 500 clinics in our community. Sure. We look at a percentage of the revenue. Okay. Sure. So, what I love about what we just talked about is like, I've never heard anyone do it the way you were talking about, which actually I really respect and I love, you know? So you're saying your benchmark is for every hundred visits a week, right? Yeah. It's like one, like, like, uh, like if, one, they're uh, doing, right? if they're doing verifications and authorizations as well, because you think about it, yeah. what is the primary role of your front desk? If you're really looking at them, your primary role is patient management. Right. And if I'm pulling somebody off of patient management to go do verifications and certifications and authorizations and cleaning clinic rooms that I see a lot, the front desk has to go clean the rooms or do the laundry. You're pulling them off of patient management. 
Yeah. And what happens is that you be, you actually become more inefficient, right? There's a reason yeah. why we run it: ninety five percent arrivals and ninety six percent conversions. It's not yeah. because don't I mean my training is huge, but another part of that is if you don't have the proper staffing, your yes. staff is pulled. And what's the thing that people don't like to do the most of? They don't like to have to manage patients and sell them like that's more difficult than going and cleaning a room or doing a verification so you want to make sure you have enough staff that your primary post which is handling patients managing patients preventing cancellations answering your phones and converting people that's your primary role of your front office staff it's it, not all this i'm going to ask you a clinic you know so if you have a big clinic you know like you have a big, big clinic that does 400 patients a week they're doing a couple of million bucks you know, um, it's very easy to like um, have like a like a, a split up like roles where like you know this person all they do is do the phone conversation because they're the best, right? This person can do like billing. This person can do all the insurance Absolutely. stuff, right? This person could do like um, all the all the you know rooms and all the other stuff, right? You know, right? Uh, yeah. Dealing with payment, you know, because those are different skill sets, right? So. What do you suggest for someone that is like literally doing 150 visits a week, yeah. you know, where yeah. like, you know, you kind of have someone full time, you have someone full time and you're like, you know, maybe on that like tipping point where like you need like another person um, yeah. half time. Like, like, do you recommend like having focused roles or like training both to do like exact same job really well, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So there, uh, that was me. Uh, that was our practice when I started with Mike um, 10 years ago. Uh, it, we were at 96 visits a week. We're now at roughly just under 500 visits. Um, and honestly, that's where we started. We had one patient care coordinator and she worked from this hours to this hours, but we were open. We bookended it being still open and we didn't have staffing there. And that affects your practice. Not having enough staffing at your front desk will keep you from, you'll be missing calls, you'll be missing appointments, people won't be managed. So one of the suggestions I make for practices is, okay, you have your one full-time person. When you're looking to hire somebody and you can't afford that full-time person, first of all, get your metrics up. The higher your metrics are, the more efficient you are, the more you can afford more staff in your front because remember the front are you know they're not um they're not the ge money generators but they are the ones that make sure the money generators are full right so i would look to hire somebody rick that wanted to was willing to willing to start full part-time with the willingness and ability to expand to full-time and earn a full-time salary and position in your practice by showing you that a, they're willing to learn, they're willing to do the training, master the metrics, be successful. And so when you're searching for somebody and, and you're small, like we were, you find somebody that wants to start with you part-time and you, but was willing to expand to full-time. Now you can do the reverse. You can go all in and have two people and train them up really hard and really fast, like I did as well in the past. And, um, you know, you get your metrics up really hard and really fast and the money's there. As See, well. so, so I went through that too. And like when you hire someone that's part-time, they're picking up a part-time job at another place, right? Let's be straight up, right? You know, because, you know, unless unless you're someone that always just wants to be part-time. Sure, you know? I don't want a part-timer. I don't want a part-timer, right? So I don't, so, I don't hire part-timers in yeah, any so, situation. So, so, so back to the situation where like, you know, like if I, if I want to hire this person part-time, they do a part-time like job, like maybe at another place, you know, yep. I'm competing with like this other person that wants to take them full time with the same message. Right. You know? Yeah. And so something that, you know, like, and so I want to bring it back to you, like, you know, cause something that you talked about earlier was that like, we're leaking so much money in the front, you know, yeah. right. You know, does it make sense just to bite the bullet? and hire someone full-time. Yeah. And, and, and once again, maybe that person they hire full-time, their main job is just to close deals on the phones. You know, yeah. they do the outbound call, they do the inbound call, and they could like work with him on scripting and conversion rates. And, and then the yeah. skills that you hire is very different from hiring someone that does billing or yeah. like intake and, and, and all that transactional stuff, right? So what's yeah. your thoughts about that, Dee? I, I, love, I love to hear your thoughts since you're the yeah, expert I mean, of like, front desk and sales I, training, right? Look, I, I, get, I, I look at both sides of things. I totally understand the practice whose margins are so, so fine that they can't make that big jump to two. And let me tell you, my husband, Mike, if he were on this call right now, would totally tell you, I had to like pin him down and be like, I am hiring two people. And 
I hired two amazing people and I worked side by side and trained them up. That's again, not necessarily what everybody has that ability as an owner or manager to train side by side, but it is very valuable, number one, to staff your clinic, your front appropriately because we spend so much time and money staffing our back end and our clinical end, but our front end is what really makes sure that our back end has somebody to treat, hence more money is generated for the practice. So it's not just about train, it's not just about hiring staff, it's about training them up so that they have the comfort and the skills and the systems to manage your patients and be successful. So if it were me, I'd bite the bullet. I'd hire two people. I would get rid of any extraneous job they do not have to do. So they should not be cleaning like up treatment tables and rooms. Your front desk should never, ever be walking Ooh. away from the front desk. I know that's going to irritate you. You're going to upset, upset a lot of clinic owners. On I know. And I love you all. And as a clinic owner, I totally get it. But here's a, here's a little tip. So my PTs and athletic trainers in our clinic are hired uh, with the understanding that they do laundry and clean their own tables. So, um, oh, so your, your, your clinicians do all the cleaning? They do. They they, do. People type in the chat. Who, who, uh, I'm curious about this. This is, this is fascinating. Um, and, and then here's the thing. They're hired. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Type in the chat. Type in the chat. Um, who cleans your rooms? Is it the clinician or is it like the front? Type in the chat, you know, right? Oh, Lacey, I, I, I like it. See. Clinicians. Oh, yeah. It's a good split, you know. There are right? some good clinician groups in here. All right. Seriously, though, um, you have to look at efficiency. I'm a hugely efficient person. My goal is efficiency across the board. Um, so, you know, anytime you take your front desk off of your front office lines, meaning your patient management lines, you are less efficient on your schedule. You're less efficient. Um, anywhere in your clinic, because remember your front desk has one role and their role is to manage your patient's care. So if they walk away to fold laundry, they're not calling patients to fill your schedule for tomorrow. They're not handling, they might be answering your phones, but they're not managing all those other things like schedule efficiency and your cancellations and refills and um, other collections. So my advice, you know, uh, and my, my practices that I worked with will tell you, we fought this fight before, but um, it's really, really important that your front office can focus on their patients when they're working. Hey, so, so I, I love this conversation, you know, because um, this conversation is about like, what should a front desk do, right? Which I don't think we talk enough. So, so D, if you were to like, have like a, a like a, like a list, you know, what, what would the be like the 10 things that they would do, you know, like, can you name it off? Yeah, now, well, right? it's all it's all geared towards your product. Your product is people helped. You can't help people if your front desk isn't focused on that. So when you're looking at it, it's all around your metrics, right? So arrival rate. If I'm if I have a very low arrival rate, meaning I have a high cancellation rate day to day, same day cancellations and no shows, not prior cancellations and no shows, I'm not efficient as a practice. So first, it's there's five metrics. There's arrival rate. There's new yeah. patient conversions, right? Because if I'm not converting new patients, that's a potential $1,200 plan of care. I don't have the for, or 700 if you're on the East Coast, okay? Um, so that's new patient conversions, arrival rate, um, yeah. schedule efficiency, right? If my schedule isn't full day to day, if I'm not mastering and managing that. So there's somebody that asked early on, um, well, what if you, how do you keep patients if you, don't if your schedule's full well first of all you have to be filling every empty spot at all times you have to be educating patients on how that's going to happen so that if they're not scheduled that's being managed so that's schedule efficiency as well um then there's um uh percentage of visits kept per week so that's your prescribed visits kept so you have a pt that's prescribing three times two two times four is the patient actually scheduled and arriving for that percentage of visits per week because if that's not the case, okay, well, now we're not maximizing the patient care or the clinic's ability to help. And so then we go back to number one and we try to get more new patients, but we don't need them if we manage arrival rate, schedule efficiency, and visits kept per week, right? And then the fifth stat that we always track because this affects the clinic's bottom line is percentage of daily collections over the counter. So if I have 100 patients that owe me a copay, deductible, or coinsurance, 
I should be collecting as close to one-to-one -one as possible. So hundred percent. D, from what I'm hearing at your clinic, your front desk, once again, it sounds like you got four or five front desks working. And you're, I started you're like, with two. You started with two. And you literally like, you have like a front desk machine going on. So they have the five metric, but when I sum it all up, what they do is like, they spend a lot of time on the phones, right? Am I right? And they spend a lot of time collecting money, right? And keeping the schedules full. Like, but it's managing it's patients. Case. All of that, all of that, Rick, falls under patient management. If I am okay. not a master at handling objections, handling patients, educating my patients on what's needed and wanted, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be successful. Uh, to my friend okay. who asked about bringing patients to the back, I make my PTs and athletic trainers come up front so that they walk them to the back and because that's the PT in me that would want my PTs to watch how a patient's moving or walking. So just saw that and figured I'd answer it. I, you know what? I, I actually agree. I actually think it's way better to have a clinician to like bring the people in the back just from a patient experience standpoint, you know, right? Because, and then once again, if we want the, if we want the, if we don't want to overload the front, you know, so that they can do a better job with conversion rates, with like keeping the schedule full, right? You know, with keeping money, you know, right? And making people sh uh, show up, we can't like give them too much stuff to do, right? You know, so I love that. That was a, that was yeah. a massive like takeaway for me. That was gold, right? Yeah. Hey, if you found that helpful, type in gold in the chat, okay? Like that was like massively helpful. Type in gold in the chat if you just love some of the, uh, the gold gems that uh, D Thanks dropped guys. in the I chat. I appreciate notes. that. Well, that makes me feel good. I'm gonna blush. Go oh, look at this. Everyone's gold, right? And if you thought it was okay, put silver. But I think yes. I think it was good. That was like amazing, right? So Chris has a question while everybody's writing gold. And thanks, you guys. Um, you guys are awesome. Um, some of them are my clients. Some of them are not. Um, but uh, Chris was asking about a centralized front desk versus I'm, what I'm assuming, Chris, you mean in like each, like if you have multiple locations, you want to know about a central, centralized um, front desk versus... Um, somebody like so like um so so let's talk about that really quickly so um i have actually worked with a practice in new orleans that um that had they had a central operator and a central um a central scheduler for evals right so they had a new patient scheduler and that person was central to i believe they had four clinics at the time and in their practice and so they had that and so we spent a lot of time focusing on the new patient for that central scheduler but i am very i firmly believe that whoever wears the hat of your front desk should somebody should be in that location so there's nothing wrong with having a centralized person who is scheduling evals or collecting certain data but it's really important, and this, I trust me, I have a few clients, so I would gladly refer you to them, um, who have aids that cross over. How many of you, you can put in here, if you have an aid that crosses over between the front and the back, throw that in the chat box for me, um, because that's really, really important. Um, okay, good. So here's a piece of advice if you have aids. Question, Rick, how many hats can you wear effectively, hat on your head at one time? Come on, answer the question. How many can you wear legitimately at one time, guys? I can wear one hat. <laughs> Thank you, fist bump. Okay, good. So if you can only wear one hat and you consider your job like a hat, right? This came from the conductors of the old days of on trains and stuff. If Rick can only wear one hat effectively, he can only put his attention on one job effectively. There's nothing wrong with having an aide who crosses over to the front desk, but number one, they have to be trained. And number two, when they step over that line at the front desk, they absolutely have to take off their aid hat and not rush to put it back on again until they have managed their patient effectively at the front. So there's nothing wrong with having aids step over, but number one, they have to be trained, highly trained on both sides, right? So, okay, I got my aid, they're gonna cross over. When their butt is in that front desk seat, they absolutely have to literally be not focused on rushing back to help the PT or other provider. They have to be able to handle their, so uh, yeah, wow. Tiffany, yeah, that's, that's one of my clients, love you. Um, so yeah, she's trained her, her aides to cross over yeah. and they're highly trained. They're not, they don't step in and go, oh yeah, I'm gonna answer the phone and takes notes and leave. And hey, some hey, of my clients hey, have done that. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask another, cause 
I'm, I'm respecting your time. I know. I'm so sorry. I can't blow my clients off today, but we still have like 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Yeah, 13, I'm going to guide this minutes. conversation in uh, like a little direction now. So if there are like, you know, like if there are like, you know, like what is like when you get like resumes from a front desk, okay? What oh, are, yeah. In interviews, like what are like five characteristics like that you look for? Because I'll be honest, like the turnover and like the front and the PC is so high. It's, it's almost like a Starbucks. Every time you go there, there's a different barista, right? So, okay, so what yeah. advice can you give? Like what are five characteristics you look yeah. for when, uh, um, um, uh, when it comes to like the front, you. you know? Okay, so I'm going to answer it a little bit differently. First of all, um, I test the hell out of people before I ever get on the phone with them. So you're, and I'll give this away. Tiffany will tell you this is super successful for her. So will Judy. Um, you should test somebody in your ad um, and, or in an email response to an ad, ads that come off of Indeed are automatic responses. So you could say, send your cover letter and resume and nobody sends a cover letter and you're like, delete, 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 delete. But you could be losing valuable people because it's an automated, that is how Indeed is set up. So first of all, have a test, send an email back that's like, hey guys, um, you know, here's three things I need from you. And if, and by this date and time, by the way, dates and time is super important for everything you do when you're testing. I love that. I did the exact same thing too. Give dates them a test and they don't respond when you look at it, right? Yeah, you delete it, right? And so if they, and if they don't follow your test, whatever your test is, delete it. Don't, you don't, thank you so much. I've moved on in my process. I, unfortunately, I'm not able to offer you the opportunity to move on with us. Have a beautiful day, right? I love you, but you're not keeping moving forward. The other traits I'm looking for, I actually don't hire other medical front desk people as a primary. I'm not saying I won't look at them, but that's not what I'm looking for. I look for somebody who wants to learn, who has a proven history. I actually learned this from a mentor years ago who has a proven history and can get things done. So you ask them in an interview, what can you get done? What have you done that was successful for another company that if I called the other company, you, they will tell me you did this. Those are the kinds, those are two big things. And then it's, it's their interest in your company, right? Oh, I like that. Hell yes. Um, you <laughs> Actually, hey, I just want to let everyone know there's a lot of questions. Is this like being recorded? It is recorded. If you want to copy this replay, type in hell yes in the chat and I will send you a oh, copy. There you go. Okay, I like that. Okay. So um hell yes. Um so um so yeah, so when you're looking at people traits, um, okay, so one trait I love, but I don't, it's not my first choice. I like somebody that can talk to people, right? We actually make our front desk uh the, in their first interview, we hand them a piece of paper that says, go sit in our front office, make friends with, with uh, the, the patients that walk in the door, ask them if you can ask them these questions. If they say no, leave it. If they don't, right? So we're looking at, can they talk to people? But here's the thing. You don't want somebody who's super chatty. I don't want somebody who's going to walk around my front desk every five minutes and be like, so Rick, how's it going today? It's so nice to meet you because they're, that's inefficiency. I want somebody that Rick walks in. I'm like, hey, how's it going? Oh, I'm doing really well. Okay, so so how have you been doing with your therapy? Oh, it's going really well, right? Relationships. But I don't want somebody that's like, oh, let's talk. Let me show you my pictures. You want to see my kids? Went to I went to Alabama this weekend. You want to see my trip to Alabama? Like, you don't want somebody that does that because that's not, you're not going to be efficient if somebody spends 20 minutes talking to every patient, right? So you want somebody that can build a relationship without spending 45 so, minutes with a patient. So how, how do you know? How do you know in your interview whether they have that skill? But like I said, them? I go stick them out in the, the main office. My clinic is completely open except for offices and eval rooms. So front desk is completely open. So my, my CEO or my front office manager will hand this person a piece of paper. The person has to go sit in our waiting area. Waiting area is right there. They can totally hear um, what's going on. How's it going? So they can step in if things aren't going well. And uh, how, we give them set questions to ask. So if they veer okay. off those questions and spend, if I like you, Rick, which I do, and I spend 25 minutes on you, and I only, and by the way, they only get a 30 minute window to do this so that I'm, right, I'm huge on time. Uh, what type of questions do I give them? That's a really good question. Um, usually it's just, um, they, first of all, they have to feel comfortable saying, hi, my name is Dee, I'm here interviewing for a job and, um, and, and they, and what's your, are, are, you know, how long, and then it's, may I ask you a few questions, right? Because if the, there are patients, uh, our, all of our people that are in our practice to hire, they actually go back and hang with our clinical staff and 
um, all of our staff during that. So first it's, may I ask you a few questions as part of my interview process? Absolutely. Patient says, absolutely. They say, okay, great. So um, I only, I really have two questions for you. The first one usually is, um, how long have you been coming for physical therapy? The second one is usually, um, would you refer other people to us? And then we usually <laughs> give them the opportunity to ask a third one. And it's not, would you like, hey, Rick, will you refer somebody to me right now? It's, would you, would you, would you come back here and would you refer somebody else? Because what we're, we're trying to have them do is just get more data from this person. They're supposed to take notes. So number one, now I can see their handwriting. Can they take good notes? Uh, Cause you know, I want to be able to read what they write on things in our clinic. And then um, we want to see that they've talked to five separate people during those 30 minutes. So if they spend, if I spend 25 minutes on Rick and I have five minutes to talk to four more people, that's not an efficient use of my time. I'm not a good time manager. I can't. So what we're looking is, wow. can they, we're looking. And so Rick, to answer your question, one thing I am looking for is somebody who is organized. And so if I, Here's a great question to ask during a phone interview or an in-office interview. Tell me, this is my favorite question. Tell me, describe your day from the time you wake up till the time you go to bed in order from start to finish, right? And I will tell you, I have done this. I did this for another owner once just for, she was struggling. And uh, one person I interviewed went, okay, so I get up, I go right downstairs. I let the dog out. I let her back in. I feed her, like went right one, two. I go upstairs, I get showered. I come back down. I pack my shake. I go off to work for the day. I get to work. I answer. Was that good or bad? That's good. Another okay. person, this is bad. Let me give you a demo of bad because this is what y'all are looking to avoid. I get up in the morning and I go downstairs. Oh, wait, wait, wait. First, I go and wake up my kids, and then I go downstairs and I let out the dog, and then I start to make coffee. Oh, no, wait, I go out and get the paper, and then I make coffee. Like The person who can't put their day in order that they live every day is not going to follow directions. They whether you're in the workplace, right? <laughs> they just, they can't, if they can't get their own bleep in order, they sure as heck are not getting yours in order. So um, that's a really it, big so how long is this question? Like, does it last for five minutes, 10 minutes? Because you can ramble the this whole is a phone. This is a phone interview or a face-to-face -face interview. So understand my process and Tiffany and Judy will tell you my process is long. It's hire slow, fire fast, right? So we don't yeah. hire any front desk staff without challenges on email and online. If they don't follow that, beep, beep, goodbye. Yeah, I said bleep, but it's true. Um, and then um, then I do phone interviews. If Let me be honest, guys, if you can't sit at home in your pajamas and have a conversation with me and totally focus on me as I'm interviewing you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to move forward. So you have to have a, a process. I do have a process start to finish wow. so that the, we, we now as many of the ones that aren't going to be a good fit as possible. Um, then I get on a phone interview with you. Well, I'm looking for, there's stuff I'm looking for. You're going to take the salary I pay you. We have a young lady that my husband and I have known this young lady since she, she's my daughter's age, since they were in uh, kindergarten. And uh, she came for a job interview with us and Marie had qualified. Uh, we aren't in our clinic anymore. We both do separate coaching and consulting. And so um, Marie is running our clinic and she, we were talking this morning and she did an interview with this young lady. This is how much we're willing to pay for this position. Is this good? Yes, it's good. You should always ask that on the first phone call. Don't bother with anybody if they're not willing to take your salary. Uh, I always say, thank you so much. I can't afford you. Have a wonderful day. If somebody really loves me, they'll be like, wait, I really want to work for you. I'll take whatever you pay. I've had that, yeah. uh, but don't waste your time. And so Rick, my process, I bring people in, I test them. I test I them on the it. phone. Um, yeah. yeah, so I offer that as well. Okay. So so we have six minutes. Six minutes. And there's one one last thing. Um, I feel like we should do another session. Who, who wants me to do another session with D? Type in D if you want me to do another interview with D. You know, type in D if you want more D. Right? You know. Um, and so, <laughs> what's that? And so, another question I have is that, like, uh, very quickly, what would you say is like um, the maybe top like top three tips you have on? on how do you actually manage your like the PECs, you know, right? You know, how do you manage them um, um, and not overwhelm them, you know, and stress them out, especially during like the COVID crisis and like there's, there's a lot of personal stuff going on. Like there's this like weird balance between like there's some business objectives, but there's also like personal challenges going at home right now. Yeah, day, so right? 
so that's it's just like your patient you have to you have to have a controlled hiring process you should never hire somebody because you're desperate so a good friend of mine actually neil uh many many years ago shared with me never stop hiring i don't care if you have three people at your front desk never stop hiring because number one you could always find somebody better uh, so management starts from your interview just like your first phone call starts managing your patients managing your staff um, really starts with the interview and the testing that you do to make sure you find the right person and then having training and policy in place so that you can train them up to be skilled look we never we go to pt school or veterinary school or chiropractic school for how many years and we master the why behind everything we do so if you don't train your front office staff if you don't provide them with the skills and training you're always going to, they're always going to feel like they're one step behind. And when they have enough times that they fail with a patient on the phone or in person, they're going to fail at their job and they're going to leave. Most staff leave because they, they have, they built up enough failures that they can't handle anymore. So management is really about managing by your statistics, managing, they have to know their stats. They have to know what gets them their stats. That's a big thing. Like what I e, What do you do stats. now? Okay. What do you do now? Like, I get it. Like, you know, like, I love the fact that always be hiring. Okay. Like we should, we should like, um, you know, and we should start from the interview process, but what do you do with like now? Like you got three people, you know, like, do you get rid of them or like, do you start, like, what is something tactical that you can start next week? Cause I think a lot of people, um, Your are metrics. this weird crossroads, right? You know, right. First of all, you have to train them on their product. Their product is the percentage of people they help in a day, right? Your entire okay. clinic. I don't care what service you're in. It's about helping people in physio. It's about helping somebody reach full recovery, right? If you don't help somebody, if you don't stay focused on that as a practice, you will not be successful. So your management is all about their metrics. You teach them what their product is, their metrics measure their product, and you provide them with the right scripting and training so that they can be successful. So that would be my first suggestion is you hire really well, slowly, you find the right people and it doesn't have to be they have skills, it's okay to train them. My most successful people have come to me from, um, one came from a lawyer's office, one came from um, right out of grad school and another came um, from, he worked at, um, oh gosh, Old Navy. And there are some of my, my top performing staff that I've ever had and I trained them or you know my system trained them, not me. Um, and well, so, you got two minutes. Tell, tell right. us about this book, you know? All right. This so, so a little bit, some of you wanted, um, wanted to know how to get in touch with me. Um, a little bit about, uh, the best thing to do first would be to just reach out for this book. Um, I know that we will make it available. It just talks about the, those four fundamentals of your front desk. Um, schedule control is really about schedule efficiency and cancellation prevention. Uh, maximizing collections we talked about and new patients we talked about. Schedule control also has some parts to it about visits kept per week as well. Um, yeah. You can, uh, you sign up for it, you have it, it gives you some great yeah. things to look at in your front desk. Yeah. Last thing, if you want me to email you a copy of the book, type in book in the chat, okay? Type in well, book in the chat. They're going to town. These guys got your name. They yeah. knew this already, Rick. They're in it. it. So if you want a copy of this, like type book in the chat, okay? Type book in the chat. And I will yeah. email you also the replay, you know, and then we'll yeah. cut it up. And if you follow myself on Instagram or you follow D in Facebook and Instagram, um, we're going to like cut up like some snippets of this video and, and, and do that. Right. So, and once again, everyone, um, um, I want, I'm going to actually throw this in the chat. The people that can't wait for the email, like you could like throw this out right now. I'm just going to like, like. Throw this in the chat. What do you think, Dean? Is this crazy? That's crazy. <laughs> I've never seen that before. That's like. Choo, 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 choo. Um, All right. I, I, it's like my ninja style. So, so everyone, uh, type in, um, um, uh, type in. What is your biggest takeaway from uh, New Patient Secrets today with D? Type in the chat. What is your biggest takeaway? Um, type that in the chat. Um, and, uh, and 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 as people uh, as as people type in what their biggest takeaway in the chat is. I just want to thank you, Dee. That was amazing. You know, thank I had you. such a good time. Um, you know, I had such a good time. Me too. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. I don't think I've had an interview like where, you know, we dealt, we dive that deep with, with like front desk, but obviously like 
it sounds like you know what you're it, it, it's very clear that you know what you're doing <laughs> like a well, thank you that would be why i've created all my training why i want practice owners to have it so um yeah, so it looks like a lot of people really like the interview strategies. So maybe that's what we should talk about the next time is more strategies for finding the right person or. Um, yeah, no, but yeah, training, is training is key, guys. That's training your yeah. staff to be successful like you are as a clinician is the most successful action you could ever have. And, and what I loved about your story, Dee, is that like, you know, you are a PT clinic owner, right? You know, so you understand what needs to happen. Um, when that new consult comes in, how to talk to patients, and you just transform that language and turn that into a training program to train yeah. the front desk. And that's why you're able to like, you know, like with these metrics and training processes and, and also using Call Hero is like, how do you train your front desk with training um, um, and how to talk to like uh, the, the, the patients without feeling salesy, you know, right? And that's really the recipe, everyone, you know, it's not like this phone script. It's not like this, this stuff. It, it's this is it's, it's, it's all everything we've kind of talked about today, you know, so. Yeah. So yeah, guys, I mean, definitely you're welcome to look out if you, if you want to look at something, uh, I can type it in the box. The, the best program to look at to at least get started or look into is um, fixyourfrontdesk.com. So that is, that is our newest training program. It's all online. You can DIY, um, join um, memberships with it, but it's really about training your staff to be successful and giving them the tools they need. So Rick, thank you so All right. much. This was awesome. Hey, everyone, give let's give a super high five uh, to D in the chat. Put a high five in the chat. Let's oh, thank you, you rock. for, uh, for D attending this party that we're having. I you do know, this all like, day long. I high five PCCs all day long. So thank you guys. I really appreciate uh, that. Super high five and D, thank you very much. We spent your time and we did finish you two did. minutes over. This all right. You rock, did buddy. It. That's all right. I can jump. Bye, guys. Have a beautiful day. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Rick. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, guys.